there, and welcome to the Pets of Plenty channel. Making a selection between the American Staffordshire Terrier and the Pitbull can be pretty challenging, as both breeds are outstanding in their unique ways. We understand this challenge, so don't worry, because as usual, we've got you covered here on Pets of Plenty. Today on the channel, we've gathered all the helpful information about these breeds to help you make the ultimate choice on the dog which gets that particular spot in your home with a nine round battle that covers everything from their history to their health. Before we continue though, we would love for you to become a member of the channel by clicking on the join button down below. You can also review the perks of Pets of Plenty membership after clicking the join button. All right, here we go. American Staffordshire Terrier versus Pitbull. Let's start the fight. Round one, history. Back in the late 1700s in Britain, old English Bulldogs were bred with black and tan terriers to make the first Bull Terrier breed, which later gave rise to the American Staffordshire Terrier. Dog fighting didn't become popular until the 19th century when people started breeding dogs specifically for the violent sport. The British began breeding old English Bulldogs and old English Terriers to make the best fighting dog. Crossbreeding created the first pit bull ancestors called the Bull and Terrier. Bull baiting and blunt sports were made illegal in England in 1895. This was when people who liked dog fighting brought the dogs to America so they could keep doing the cruel sport. Upon getting to the United States, the breed grew a little taller and got a bit skinnier, giving rise to the American Pitties and American Staffordshire Terriers we know today. Because pit bulls have been violent in the past, the American Kennel Club wouldn't recognize them. In 1898, the United Kennel Club did. Dog lovers asked for pit bulls to be called St. Francis Terriers and New Yorkies, but the name change never caught on because people didn't like it. In 1936, the Amstaff became a full member of the American Kennel Club. Some dog lovers say that the Stafford and the pit bull are the same breeds of dog. They just have different names. But with having different bloodlines, most agree they are a distinct breed and not brothers. Despite what most consider a shaky beginning, these sweet dogs have a better start on our scoreboard. One point goes to the American Staffordshire Terrier and one for the American Pit Bull Terrier. Round 2. Appearance the American Staff and the Pitbull are medium-sized dogs that look the same. The Pitbull is a little bit taller though, with a height of 17 to 21 inches from paw to shoulder. The height of the Amstaff is only 17 to 19 inches. Pitbulls are also lighter, weighing only 30 to 65 pounds. The weight of the Amstaff ranges from 40 to 70 pounds. The Pitbull is taller and leaner than the Amstaff, shorter and broader. They both look a lot like other Pitbull mixes or American bullies, which people often mistake them for. Both dogs are well balanced, with wide, square heads, muzzles, and well defined muscles, especially the Amstaff. They have short ears, which make them look more serious as if it isn't cut. Their ears are rose shaped or half pricked. Pitbull and Amstaff have several colors. Most kennels don't take black and tan or liver amstaffs. They also don't like 80% or more white or merle. Pit bulls may be any color except merle. Blue noses are rarest, followed by red. Recently, Outcrossing introduced the merle gene. This hue is fashionable, but not typical for either breed. They also often have spots of different colors all over their bodies. If either of these dogs is albino, it goes without saying that they won't be accepted. Both have shiny, smooth, and short coats. This tight coat shows off their muscular bodies. The chiseled cool look works every time, so let's give them one point each for this round. It's now two points for the Amstaff and one for the Pitbull Terrier. Round 3. Temperament Pitbull and Amstaff owners sometimes get unfavorable looks and harsh comments when walking their pets. Pitbull owners are regularly faced with this unpleasant reality. Overblown news articles and internet misunderstandings misrepresent these breeds. But many Pitbull owners would describe their dogs as silly and sweet. Even though these dogs are known to be mean, they're very playful and loving. They often want nothing more than cuddling up with their owners and just being goofy. 
well, though, if they don't get the care they need, you can be sure they will quickly become destructive. Dogs are not naturally aggressive, but the APPT and AM staff can be if they're taught to be. Because they want to please their owners, they're happy to do whatever their owners tell them to do. However, if they're trained to be family pets, you can bet that they will be the finest dog ever. If you want your Amstaff or American Pitbull Terrier to be as calm as a nanny dog, you'll need a dedicated owner with the patience and time to train them right. Bully breeds usually need owners who are firm but kind. They need to be socialized early on to become family dogs that you can be proud of. Neither breed is recognized for being gentle to other animals if they aren't socialized as puppies. Pitbulls, which have a naturally high prey instinct, need to be on a leash outside in public places so they don't bother other dogs or small animals. Both breeds are great companions for kids of any age. Still, no reputable dog trainer would recommend leaving a child alone with a dog. You might be surprised that well-adjusted, trained, and socialized pit bulls don't make good guard dogs and that Amstaffs are better at that job. For being better guard dogs, the Amstaff takes the point for this round. We are now at three points to two for the Pitbull Terrier. Round four, grooming. These dogs are much easier to groom than most other breeds. A bath about once every two months is enough, and brushing them once a week will keep them shiny and healthy looking. Other basic grooming tasks, like brushing the dog's teeth and cleaning its ears, are the same as any other medium-sized dog. Both breeds don't shed very much. As single-coated dogs, Amstaffs and Pit Bulls will shed about the same amount all year. Because their hair is so long, you won't have to worry about an undercoat rake. Even though they are not hypoallergenic, both dog breeds shed far less than the average double-coated dog. At the end of this round, they get the point each for their low-maintenance needs. Four for the Amstaff, three for the Pit Bull. Round five, socialization. Love or fear them, pit bull terriers are part of loving families all over the U.S. They make devoted friends, whether they're active, high energy, couch potatoes, therapy, or service dogs. Like any other breed of dog, the key to raising a good pit bull is to be a responsible pet parent. How a puppy is socialized in his first three months will affect his personality and behavior as an adult. Slowly introducing your puppy to new people, places, and circumstances can help him become become confident, happy, and sociable. Public dog parks aren't always friendly. There will always be a few irresponsible dog owners with poorly trained pets. So, set up smaller playgroups with well-behaved dogs that get along with your pit bull or am staff. And keep an eye on playtime to halt it if things get too wild. Socialization classes for puppies are a great way to get your puppy used to other dogs in a safe setting. They can start these classes between 7 and 8 weeks old. Both dogs grow to become excellent with early socialization, so it's safe to give them one point each for this round. 5 to 4 everyone, with the Amstaff taking the lead. Round 6, Training when it comes to being easy to train, the Pitbull and Amstaff are almost the same, with more positive testimonies for the latter. Their willingness to please and love of tasty treats makes them the perfect candidates for obedience. But these dogs can act independently when they don't know what to do. They need people who know what they're doing and train them consistently. When training these terriers, give them a lot of praise and let them know when they've done something that makes you happy. If they feel like they know, and care about you, they will likely do the good thing again. They don't like it when trainers are rough with them, and doing so in an unhealthy way can make them act more aggressively than they need to. The point for this round goes to the pit bull for its eagerness towards training. So now we have a tie at five points for each breed. Round 7 Exercise both the pit bull and the Amstaff need the same amount of exercise. Both are high energy dogs that need up to an hour of daily exercise. Since the pit bull is the more athletic version, it would like a little more exercise. Amstaffs being more likely to take a nap in the afternoon. Nevertheless, they both contain a significant amount of energy that has to be released. Playing interactive games with them, like fetch or agility courses, is the best way to do this. So, even when they can't get 
a lot of physical energy, they need a lot of mental stimulation to keep them from getting bored and doing bad things. The pit bull moves on to take the lead with a point for being more athletic. Six points to five for the AM staff. Round eight, nutrition. Both dogs should eat food that is good for pit bulls or bull terriers. They'll each consume around two and a half cups of food each day. However, some dogs may require more depending on their activity level. Don't get carried away giving these cute dogs snacks as this might lead to obesity. They both thrive on plenty of fresh, clean water every day. They get the point each for their diet and nutrition. Here we go, seven points to six for the Amstaff. Round 9. Health the American Stafford Terrier and the Pitbull are both healthy dogs. They both live between 12 and 16 years. Both are prone to elbow and hip dysplasia, which is common in older dogs of most breeds. The Pitbull is more prone to develop cerebellar abiotrophy, a condition in which the area of the brain that governs balance and coordination is impaired, causing him to struggle with movement. This is something that usually happens later in life. The Amstaff is also more likely than the Pitbull to have heart problems as they age. Many terrier dogs are also known to have skin allergies that they get from their parents. They may have these allergies for the rest of their lives. Looks like they both deserve a point for their healthy lifespan. We've reached the end of today's contest, and the final tally says it all. The Pitbull slightly wins the show. We'd love to conclude by saying every human has a choice. It's vital to consider your personal needs and environment during adoption. Both dog breeds can work excellently as a pet or companions. This is our evaluation. Remember, yours may be different. In addition, before adopting a dog, do well to seek professional advice from the breeder and your veterinarian. What are your thoughts on today's contest? Let us know in the comments section. Consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button to get early access to our upcoming videos plus other membership perks. Also, check out our playlists and click on the video links that pop up at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.